Hello everyone, happy full moon in Pisces. This full moon is occurring September 1st and September 2nd, 2020. So check your location for the high peak. The high peak in the Pacific Standard Time is at 1021 p.m. which is 1.21 a.m. September 2nd Eastern Standard Time. Some of you like to know the degrees of the full moon and it's 10 degrees 11 minutes. So if you're doing a meditation, 30 minutes would be good or any spiritual practice. 30 minutes will be good, but the high peak of it is lasting 11 minutes, starting at 10.21 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So find out, you know, for your location. All right. So this is also known as the harvest moon. So we have a few things to cover. So being that it's the harvest moon and it's a full moon this is near the time of the autumn equinox and this is a time that we think about the summertime and the plentiful food we have you know like the, the fruits the vegetables um it's just a time of plenty right where the land is giving and it's feeding right and then our ancestors would store these foods for the winter or the dry season if you didn't have snow in your location, right? So this harvesting time is representing your hard work and your dedication to survival, to feeding yourself. So we can look at this and ask ourselves, what are we going through right now that the spirituality, the meaning, right, of Pisces can help us with? Because Right now, it is this harvest moon time. So what have we worked for, right? And good and bad. Some of us are going through hardships, um, difficult times personally, and then also globally. So we have the global effect, right, right now of two major things or three, depends on how we want to divide it up. And then we have our own personal issues and then how that affects our personal issues and well-being, right? So we we have this going on and the harvest moon. So what are we preparing for? How are we preparing for for fall, right? Because the full moon is not necessarily a new beginning, right? But the, but the the harvest moon represents new beginning. And what comes after all this plentifulness, right? And what comes after our hard work and what our energy has been used for, right? Our dedication, our steadfast to surviving. That's our basic needs, our home, our food, and so on, right? So that's that harvest moon. Now, being that it's September 1st is the full moon and it's at night, we can make sure that we're taking that time to really enjoy the full moon, okay? And the effects of that. Now, Tuesday, September 22nd, is the autumn equinox for 2020 this year for the Northern Hemisphere. And that's going to happen at 6.30 a.m. In, in Pacific Standard Time, okay? So that's about 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's going to be the autumn equinox. This is also a time, which I talk about on my other channel, which how are you going to eat, right? How are you going to change the way you eat? And for me personally, it's um, not fasting. It's fasting, you know, to adapt to that new way of of eating foods within that season and, and, you know, raking the food and really being mindful of what we put in our body for our digestive system. Right. And just doing the best that we, we can until we know better. Right. So I wanted to just cover that. 
All right, so let's let's keep it moving here. So now 10, that 10 degrees reverts into one, right? And that's independence, leadership, working together, right? So this Pisces moon represents that. I'm going to make a shorter video just on numerology, but we can think about Pisces being uh, spiritual, all the meanings of, of Pisces, right? And how can we incorporate the meaning of Pisces into the number 10, right? And into the number one, okay? Because that 10 is going to go back into one. So we can think about the, the meaning of Pisces, which is ruled by Neptune, okay? And it, it's ruled by the 12th house right? And it's about our intuition. So leading up to this, this, uh, full moon, I've been having very powerful dreams and they've been actually coming, coming true, you know, and decoding the dreams because the dreams don't, you know, show you straight what things are, right? So it's that trusting our intuition, even if it's something that, that happened last March or almost a year ago, I was like, Oh, I don't have such a good feeling about this. And now it's showing back up as, you know, hmm, I was correct on that. But things had to happen a certain way for maybe someone else to learn a lesson, right? Because we can know all we want. We can give good advice. And sometimes we're not even good at giving good advice for ourselves. But sometimes things have to play out. Sometimes a person has to learn through their own mistakes or just, you know, have an experience and learn that, right? doesn't have to be completely negative. It's just something that had to happen. Now, water, we can think about the element of water. Water is nurturing. nurturing. We need water. You know, that's a, a powerful element on our planet. And water, water is powerful. Water takes its time and it's persistent. It can move rocks. It can move mountains, right? So water might seem calm or might seem like it's just settling there, but then it's working undercover and it's making... It, it's putting that pressure and it's making that those small changes. And then all of a sudden you realize, boom, there's a flash flood. Boom, the, the rock is moving that was big. Boom, the mountain is moving that is big, right? So over time, what can you do small things over time that will build up to something big? How can you divide your time? Maybe that's time management, you know? Um, that's a lot now for parents with this homeschooling and, and everything like that and trying to get your stuff done, right? So Pisces is is about, there's something I'm seeing here that is, is Pisces is about how can you live your life well, right? Be happy in a world that is chaotic, that isn't easygoing, that is living in a standard of... Um, really asking too much of ourselves sometimes. So we might be going through that, this full moon is like, you know, someone or something is asking too much of me, right? So let's look at this right now. Okay. We are in the end of summer, right? So it's still hot for most of us. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere, right? It's still hot. So we're still experiencing the heat of a fire, really, you know, coming off of um, Virgo, um, off of Leo, now into Earth sign Virgo, right? Virgo birthdays, Earth grounding, right? So we, we, we are in this transition, okay? And this is a very powerful transition for us. Now I'm going to go it back into the numerology of that 10 degrees, 11 minutes, right? So 11 is always like a big message, a big sign, right? A big message that we are going to receive kind of like the, the, the towers in tarot card. It's like something you have to let go of that building is burning and destroying something you have to get rid of that you we're like, oh, I'm going to hold on to it because of pride or oh, I'm going to hold on to it because of whatever, whatever. But then you really need to just get rid of it because it's something that that that, that spent its course, it spent its time. That's the 11th. So we're going to have a big message, 
and we're going to see it again. Even if it's a message we saw already, we're going to see it again, whether in a person, a, a, an action, your own life, whatever, it's going to have meaning. And this 10 now, like I told you, is about being independent, leadership, right? Um, but it's also symbolizes the sun, the self, like in Aries, the first house, okay? So we're going to really have to take a deep look at ourselves in this full moon of Pisces, okay? We also have, let me back up to that. We have to take a strong look at ourselves and look at where Pisces is in our chart and what house it's in, right? And what's next to it and what's not next to it in that house and see what it means for us. Look at your birth chart, okay? And then also look at what this reading is for this month and see how it matches up for you in your life, okay? Do the work and that's going to really benefit you. And it'll benefit you tomorrow too on the second, even if it even if the peak passed your location. We have Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto still in Capricorn. Right? And and whenever you have Pluto and Jupiter conjunct, they symbolize heaven and hell meet. So right now in our lives and in the big stage of life, right? In our society, we're seeing this good versus evil, this heaven and hell meeting, right? So so that Pluto and Jupiter energy, like like the Jupiter is like, I want things to go well and prosperous and great, right? But then the Pluto energy is still there. That Pluto energy might be resistant to, to letting go of power, let, resistant to the rebirth, Resisting to the evolution, resisting to the transformation, re resisting to the death of something that it needs to let go of, okay? Also rules um, uh, Scorpio, and Mars also rules Scorpio, so they can flex with those two planets, right? So Pluto looking back going, it's the little things that really matter as the size of the planet, right? Compared to, to, to Jupiter, right? So it's the little things that really matter and why is transformation, death, power, rebirth, evolution. Why is the fight against something that's supposed to make you grow? Okay? Could get really deep with that. Now, looking at this, this moon, okay, is teaching us to look at some powerful things. Let's talk about that. It's talking about the 11th and the 9th house. Pisces in the in the 11th house and Capricorn in the 9th house. I wanted to look at this because Pisces in the 11th house is really asking you to look at what groups you contribute to. Why do you support them? Why do you aspire for this or that? What's your goal with it? Is it beneficial to you? Your, fr your friends, your groups, your goal, your aspiration, right? And that Pisces is asking you to look at that spiritually. How is this benefiting you spiritually? Because if it's not in this life, then you're really on the wrong team. You're really on the wrong side. You're not really feeding your soul. Think about it. Capricorn in the ninth house. Capricorn is about this this earthly experience, right? So most of the effect is not going to be in the eighth house for Capricorn people or for us, anyone, you know, under this full moon in Pisces. Capricorn in the ninth house is really asking us powerfully to look at how we're we moving in this life because that's that's a centaur's house, that's Sagittarius's house, right? So Capricorn in the ninth house is asking us to really look at how we are thinking and moving and educating ourselves. What are we believing? What are we reading? What are we taking in? What are we be believing religiously, spiritually? How are we traveling in this world? What are the laws that we're making that will govern us in the physical world, right? Because Capricorn is about the physical world. Capricorn is about our power, our purpose. Capricorn is about our career, our status in life, our reputation, our outer world, our achievements. But it's in the ninth house of um, us expanding our horizon. When we explore the world, what are we putting out into the world? Capricorn is saying for the ninth house, right? What are we putting out into the world? 
Are we splitting ourselves in half, right? Is this truly wisdom in the sense of higher knowledge and our philosophy? What is our philosophy? Is our philosophy toxic? Is it enriching? Is it like, you know, like a Zen Buddhist or like a someone of high spiritual means? Because we're in the physical world. We can enjoy our life, but we are also spiritual beings too, right? So what are we writing down? Is it going to benefit us as far as law when it travels? Whatever we do here, it travels somewhere else. It's not We're not isolated on the planet. You see what I'm saying? So that's what the ninth house is asking us to really look at. Okay? Now another powerful movement I want to mention is, is Cancer in the third house and Virgo in the fifth house. Right, difficult aspect about um, um, extreme tension, difficult um, moments, challenging moments. What lessons can we learn from these houses and from the planets? Right. So, so what can we learn from the third house? Right. Cancer being in the third house. Cancer is home and compassion. Let's just look at it from that angle. It could be many things for other people. But being in the third house, this is about what you're thinking and your immediate environment, the people you live with. How is that affecting you mentally? How, what are you learning? You know, your siblings, your your, your, your people that, that are close to you. Maybe you have roommates. How are you communicating? What activities are you not doing? How's your mental state? Are you living with negative people? Are you living with positive people? Is someone being difficult? right? Then Virgo in the fifth house. Virgo is, let's think about Virgo as getting things done, really, and want people to be at their best so that there's no problems, right? So Virgo in the fifth house is saying, okay, are the children okay? Um, how are you serving your personal creativity? Are you using your own personal tools and gifts in this life right to make sure that that you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's that what is your service to yourself, right? What is your personal creativity and how is it benefiting your life so that you can sustain yourself, so you can be of value to yourself, not to put yourself down, but are you having fun? Are you being creative? But more importantly, how how are that affecting if you have children or, or your responsibility, right? And then also... Virgo cares about what they claim, what is there. So how's your romantic life, right? How is that person that's close to you feeling? Maybe, you know, you're a person with a child, so you have to make sure your kids are okay or, or whatever, whoever you're responsible for. But then if you're in a romantic relationship, how's your partner? Is there any difficulties there? You know, what's going on? So some of you might be experiencing some kind of difficult um uh, relationship with, with 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 someone right now. It might be building up for a month before you know, or before this full moon, or really building up, you know, three weeks into it, right? And maybe the week right before this full moon, it's big tension. Okay. So let's look at, at one more thing: the sun trines Jupiter. Okay, and the sun trines Uranus. So the sun trines Jupiter. Think about this. Don't be too trusting of others because people with this aspect in their chart, if you have this, but this is powerful right now, the sun is self. Remember, it's 10 degrees and one goes back to the self in numerology. Okay, so the sun trines uh, Jupiter. Okay, this is really powerful. So this trine is an energy that brings luck, right, and opportunities. And then you have to utilize your talent, okay? However, what we want to be mindful of is the self, right, and that prosperity. You can be very kind, very sweet. But make sure that in the future, you're not welcoming or trusting to people that have been cruel to you, right? So it's a beautiful charm to have, but also you have to be mindful 
of how you give out your energy because someone might be cruel or unfair to you and it's not about holding grudges it's about protecting your energy okay so try not to be so trusting of others right don't talk too much don't let people know your business before you do something that's beneficial for you them putting their bad energy and thought and and like that on it that's really true okay this can be a great time for you to increase your financial position in life because this trine is very prosperous right it's you you, you putting yourself first if you do if you do some kind of meditation, like a Jupiter meditation tonight, that would be good. This can come in the form of money, property, or some other assets, because this is a great time for you to increase your financial position, okay? Be happy, but also be wise with how you spend your money. Just because things are going good, don't feel like, oh, let me celebrate. Don't overdo it, okay? Now, let's look at the sun trines Uranus, right? Now, let, let's look at it this way. It could be a negative way of thinking if you're always overly positive and choosing not to learn from your current mistakes, right? So only thinking about how happy your future is going to be and being in this mode, it's best for you to learn from your mistakes right now, which will benefit you so you don't keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again for the future. So don't try to fight against something that you need to learn from. But that's a lot of ego with the sun and Uranus wants to rebel against, even if someone is trying to do something good for you, maybe you're feeling like you need to protect yourself, right? And you're like, oh, things are okay now, but I need to get away from X, Y, and Z so that, that the next place I'm at in my life will be better than now. But then you're not recognizing the lesson that you could be learning right now because you're too busy being in your ego and thinking, oh, I got to fight against this. Maybe it's a time to really think, what can I learn right now? Maybe that's the real type of badass Uranus energy you need to tap into to say, I know I'm strong. I know I'm confident. I have to really think for myself first right now. But what can I learn right now so I don't keep making the same mistake again? And sometimes a person will miss the... A constellation alignment for prosperity because they're being too stubborn and someone else said this to me years ago like you know don't miss this opportunity whether you're channeling it through you know whatever action you're doing in your life but you also have a spiritual practice right maybe you're meditating maybe you're you're working out and letting go of this negative sad energy whatever you're doing and then you're like hey i really feel like i should travel i really feel like i should invest in this. I really feel that I should sell this house. I really feel I should buy this house. I should do this. I should whatever. Don't miss that opportunity if you know that it's good. All right. So the, 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 this full moon is a great time to really tap into your own spiritual power, your own spiritual energy, tap into where Pisces is in your chart, you know, connect to your, your psychic intuition so that you trust yourself more. There's many things you can do. Some of you need to trust yourself more and tap into your intuition under this Pisces full moon. And when you do that, you can tap into the full moon to see what wish you fulfill for yourself from the past new moon. What goal did you set on the new moon that just passed? Is it is it fulfilled right now? It's a harvest moon. So um, what, what what do you need to really stack up on or invest in for your winter, right? Um, some of you will be doing manifesting work, spell work, achieving um, all of your dreams, putting that energy into it, protecting your energy, right? You could do protection work, protect your energy. Maybe you're doing um, whatever spirituality or religious uh, prayer you want to do, or maybe you're doing Tai Chi practice. Maybe you're doing Qigong. Maybe you're doing yoga, Kundalini mantra, you know, whatever mantra, right? You can protect your ideas by not blabbing your mouth so much. Maybe blessing an idea that you have under this full moon, okay? So those are the type of full moon works you can do. Some of you really need to trust your intuition, and that's powerful work that you can do. Work with the element of water. Water, you can use your psychic abilities to scry with water 
at, at, at this full moon. It doesn't matter if you miss the high peak or not. Okay. Um, another thing that you can do is be mutable, right? So you have Pisces, Sagittarius, Virgo, and Gemini are mutable signs. The positive thing is you can be versatile. Learn to be adaptable. Learn to be changeable. Okay. Learn to be sympathetic towards maybe yourself or another person and not let the anger get to you about how negative they're being. Trust your intu intuition. Be sublime, right? So get rid of the negativity um, of um, being unde undependable, right? Right? That's, that, that is one trait. Um, being too crafty, you know? Um, don't be deceptive. Don't be inconsistent because that's not going to help you to grow, right? So focus on the positive. Be adaptable, willing to be change up when you need to change up, you know? Um, be versatile, you know? And trust your intuition. Trust yourself. Be, be able to change, right? Be able to see all sides of an issue so that you're not you know, filling yourself up with being judgmental. That could be something positive, right? I could go on and on, but I hope that this reading helps you guys uh, to really connect to this full moon. I'm going to jump right into um, the horoscope reading in the next video for all 12 signs.